We've rolled credits on Little Nightmares 2, beat the game, and now are ready to powwow and tell you if this is a must-buy on Nintendo Switch. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. We're going to go over the good, the bad, the spooky of this game in our spoiler-free review. I'm joined by my partner in crime, Gabe, who's here to discuss Tarsier Studios' sequel, which costs $30 and is available uh, in a few hours. Zach, I don't know why I'm still in the nightmare. Have I woken up? That's what I want to know. I mean, you are talking to me, so you, you get to decide if that's a dream or a nightmare, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that that's a trick. I don't know <laughs> if it's real or not. I mean, oh, boy. <laughs> well, some of the good things about this game right off the bat and that are, I'm happy about are one that it's on Switch Day and Date because you might remember that Little Nightmares 1, while phenomenal, it didn't hit Switch till much later. And now Little Nightmares 2 is available everywhere on the same day and and this is still a very spooky game how spooky on a scale of one to ten do you find it really because i know that you are a little more like adverse to getting scared at video games i i generally like don't although it is like creepy i would call it more unnerving than spooky but did you ever like truly mm. get spooked there is a section that involves mannequins that really got me scared <laughs> um other than that i feel like it's just more evocatively eerie but like that specific segment of the game like i was yes sweating and on edge oh man oh sweat i've never even seen sweating. you sweat. i played basketball with you and you won't sweat <laughs> oh, only the lower half of my body sweats i don't know it's a weird okay. thing that i got going on here okay <laughs> All right. But it, it, it is it is a very spooky adventure. Whether you play Little Nightmares 1 or 2, I think you can jump into this and be A-OK. -okay. The, the story is very abstract, I would say. There, there's no dialogue. Um, there's no real setup. You're just in this very downtrodden, disturbing world. And you get a sense right off the bat that something is amiss. And, and I feel like it just progressively gets more odd and more messed up as you go. Which is great, but I, I will say that there are some cool call, callbacks to the original game for those of you that did play it. I, I do want to keep that in mind. Like, there is that one like particular moment, like an achievement pops up or, or whatever that says um, True Colors. You, you know mm -hmm. you know the thing I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, I feel like if you've never played Little Nightmares and you have no idea, like, that moment right there, which is a cool moment, just completely goes over your head. So I, I would recommend people play the first one, even if it's just for that moment, because the first game's phenomenal in its own right. So, right, and I think it's important to, you know, go into what did they expand upon here? It still is this side-scrolling 2D, 3D. It's it's basically a 2D game, but with depth, I, I guess. Um, the environments are as detailed and as spooky as ever. But but what did they expand upon here? They they claim that the game was going to be about double the length. I clocked in around a little over four hours. So it, to me, it was is about the same length as Little Nightmares 1, um, which might be an area where I dock this. They have increased the price to $30. It still feels about the same size of Little Nightmares 1, although the scope has expanded. D did you feel like the way that they built out the world, like did that impact your game sessions? I mean, I wouldn't say that it impacted my game sessions like frankly i don't think i'm upset if i spent 30 dollars on this okay you know one of the areas that they didn't expand and i don't know if you're ready to get into that yet but it's like the gameplay is mm -hmm. expanded a decent amount so again if i paid 30 dollars for this i'm not upset by the game like i prefer shorter games and i and i feel that that happens as like you grow older right you have less and less and less time for things like this so when a game kind of cuts out the filler you're happy. I always because look, imagine if it did have maybe like three or four more hours, but it's just like kind of regurgitating mechanics and puzzle right. stuff that you've already done. I, I much rather have this tight experience that yeah, is a little bit shorter, but it, it's full of good stuff. Yeah, it definitely does not overstay its welcome in any one segment. Um, you talked about how the gameplay has expanded. I think the big way is that they've tried to introduce a bit of a combat system here. Uh, you'll be wielding really heavy weapons and swinging them very slowly. And I think this is gonna be a hit or miss, honestly. Like, like either you're going to really like that they added this timing-based combat, and, and it's not totally, like, a, it's not across the whole game, right? There's just some sections where you have this combat, or you're gonna feel like, okay, this is cumbersome and annoying and difficult to aim. I flip-flopped. There were times, like, at the beginning where I was like, I love the combat, I'm glad they added it, and then there were times where I wish it was not a part of the story because I feel like these little, the characters, which, by the way, there are two in this game. Uh, 
they they're more about like hiding and maneuvering than they are necessarily about confronting yeah i didn't mind the combat i honestly didn't even have any strong feelings about it in other direction like i think okay. it you know it was there and it worked and i understand that people might think it's cumbersome but i figured the timing out of it like pretty quickly so i don't believe i had any issues as soon as you see the movement animation for whoever or whatever is attacking you as soon as they're going to lunge you press it and you pretty much have a 98 percent chance of hitting them so yeah, yeah I, I figured that out quite quickly i don't, I don't think it's anything like crazy i, I could have done without the combat just as well uh, sure. it, it, it's just there I, I guess it's just another box for them to take they have combat this time yeah one thing i think is going to be universally loved though and this is not a spoiler it's been shown off in the concept art the the trailers you are playing what i love to call lonely co-op um with another character and so that element I think definitely enhances the game. The fact that you have two characters to work with, it allows them to, you know, introduce some more complex uh, platforming. It allows them to introduce some more uh, different types of puzzles. And when you're in this oppressive world, I just love having a friend to follow me around. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this game. I'm sure you do. Brothers, they tell of two sons. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That is one of my favorite lonely co-op games. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's honestly quite great. And, you know, as I was playing Little Nightmares 2, I kind of wish that some of the puzzles were a little bit more intricate because mm -hmm. you do use like both characters and there are some like simple mechanics where you like call the character over, hold the character's hand, things like right. that. Uh, but I also think it does a really good job of automating a lot. So yeah, like it's very contextual. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, character two is what well, I'll just call this character. Like mm -hmm. they'll just go like kind of do like do this thing and you're like, wait, why are you doing that? And then like it all kind of just makes sense because of what you eventually figure out you're supposed to do so i, it's, I like, it's kind of like, I like a hint, yeah it's kind of like a hint system in in a weird way because this character sometimes will it, it's not like very forward but as long as you're in the right kind of area they might give you a little bit of a tell in terms of like okay hey we're gonna jump up here or hey we're gonna you know peer down this over this ledge and that might mean we need to go down and i felt the same as you did in terms of wanting the puzzles to be a little bit more expansive i will say that as the game progresses, I feel like the puzzles progress. Um, there is a point where they try something pretty darn cool. It is a totally different type of puzzle than anything they had in Little Nightmares 1. I really don't want to even say many describing words. Um, it gave me vibes of... I'll be, I'll be very nebulous here. It gave me vibes of a Valve game, um, which I really liked. And that caught me off guard. And I think that, for me, delivered some of the coolest moments but we, we can't there's talk little nightmares there's only one valve game that, <laughs> i mean well two i guess um but it's the same game it's uh, left for dead dang it no it's not no it's uh, not. Uh, wait but i wanted to ask you this though yeah. do you think that they maybe like missed an opportunity both to bring like the value up without adding more to the game and not having co like actual co-op we call mm. it lonely co-op right and i believe right. you and i are the type of player that actually likes that i do but but for a lot of other people maybe it would have been cool to be able to play with your friend or even maybe play online and i feel like that's a good way to keep the game content exactly what it is but still bring that value up just by being able to play with someone else i think it would have been fun and i think it you're right it would have probably brought the value up i worry that Look, the downfall of this game is that it is intentionally obscure and cumbersome at times so that you can't just fly right through. Like, there's chase sequences and you have to do the jumps once or twice to kind of learn them. There's combat sequences, you have to do them once or twice to learn them. And I wonder if the reason they omitted, like, true co-op is because it would have just been chaos to have two people needing to, like, make those jumps, complete the combat together. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, I also think calling it the downfall of the game is... is slightly because i think we both like the game right like i don't oh, I, I i absolutely like the game i just think that the weakest element is that i mean i mean it's it, it's part of its strength too the identity of little nightmares i respect and love that it doesn't feel like anything else like i guess the closest comparison would be the play dead games but even in in its aesthetic and its audio design and its mechanics and its controls like nothing else really feels like little nightmares and that is great but obviously it has some drawbacks downfall maybe is too strong drawback is, is probably what i should say yeah i mean even the the play dead games right because i was thinking about that a lot like while playing this yeah you, know, you, you think back to limbo right like the, the more like recent one or not that's the older one i guess inside inside, inside. Correct. 
even those don't do atmosphere like this. No. Like, like you, you mentioned the audio design. I, I feel like what they do here is like on another level. Like there were times where like I was hearing a noise, right? I was playing with headphones the entire time and I took my headphones off. I said, wait, like was something happening like with my dog or something? But no, like it was the game. I said, wow, that's like incredible audio right there. So I, I really enjoy that. And even Play Dead who kind of are the fathers of what this is. Right. They don't quite do it like this. I still think that the atmospheric setup for Little Nightmares is second to none when it comes to these type of games. I would agree. They, they find a way to make it creepy and memorable and entrancing without using, honestly, too many set pieces, without using any blood or gore. Um, and, and whereas Play Dead, I feel, focuses more on the mechanics and having more intricate puzzles, yeah, Tarsier just, they hit a home run, and, and that is most evidenced by... The creepy i like to call them muppets i don't know how you describe them but the boss characters <laughs> yeah they they are back and they're not just muppets. As, there's no hands in them just as <laughs> well there's some stuffing I, I don't know they i don't <laughs> the whole lore of this world is is fascinating to me but they are creepy as ever the lady the woman again no spoilers but she is just mm. that's a bad that's a bad woman man such a good set piece like the vent stuff i mean i guess like i yeah. love that section like i loved yeah. it it's it's intense and and there's about the same number and i found this interesting there's about the same number of bosses in this game as there were in the first game and i guess i expected more but there is a point in the game where there's kind of a a shift in the style not, not really the style but i guess the the way it progresses um and they try to take advantage of their bigger scope now i will say that a lot of the bigger scope is just window dressing, right? It's just like, oh, the city in the background, right? It's just, you can see depth in more of the shots. It doesn't necessarily, and, and you echoed this, it doesn't necessarily impact your gameplay, but I, I kind of love that they didn't try to do too much. I think it's easy, like when you are making a sequel to a really successful game, to just like blow it all up, right? right? And, and, and that's like part of the danger with sequels especially when the game is like so beloved the original little nightmares sold so well reviewed so well and i honestly kind of appreciate that they were able to keep it reined in a little bit because mm -hmm. yeah like the price went up but you know if you think about it from a business perspective when your original game is so successful and on every front yeah you're gonna sell it a little more expensive because you know that the brand already because little nightmares is now a brand comes with some recognition like they're making like TV shows on it and stuff. So like, yeah, yeah like the, the brand is big at this point. So I understand the, the, the raising of the $10. And I feel like that's one of the things that people might have an issue with. They're mm. like, hey, this is $10 more expensive, but there isn't a whole lot more game. But I feel like what is here is good enough that for me, at least, I don't necessarily have an issue with it. It feels like an old school sequel in that like, hey, it's another game instead of a, like a, a, a totally different game, right? Like oftentimes we see sequels have to like take it to a whole different level. And, and this very much feels like they have elements of that, but it really is just like Little Nightmares 2. Like it, it truly is a second Little Nightmares game in terms of length, in terms of styling. They do take a few more risks, I'd say here. Um, some pay off very well. And, and I would argue that some of the the latest points in the game don't pay off as well but yeah i i would i would personally not shy away because of the price point just because i feel like it's an experience that is is very unique like you're not going to get this really anywhere else yeah i mean i have i have to agree with you i i think the game is really fun and whatever amount of hours it, it took for me to complete or for you to complete i can safely say that for the most part we were entertained by it yeah right like e even if we don't like some of the direction that it went in i feel like they try to make it different enough without making it too different i don't even know that makes sense but mm -hmm. like they, they had to separate it from just being a little nightmares 1.5 but then they also couldn't again i mentioned blowing it all up like they couldn't also just blow it all up so i feel like that's such a tightrope to walk on especially when you do have you know the good graces of people and you don't want to mess it up but you also can't do the exact same thing so what do you do like i always find that fascinating with sequels 
Right. So I, I, I will say that the opening area of the game maybe maybe makes you think in a lot of the trailers they've shown, a lot of the demos they've shown, the demo that they put out for people to play, I think it might make you think the game is more expansive than it is. And for me, upon completion, like I did look back and say, huh, I think my first experience with this universe was probably like I enjoyed it more. Like because there's just some elements of the game that seeing them for the first time or partaking them the first time, like now you kind of know how it's going to go. You, you kind of figure here's how this level is going to progress. Here's what I'm going to need to do. And I think that was more engaging the first time around. So you're right. It is like a difficult balance. Like you don't want to do too much different to make it feel like a totally separate entity. But I guess I would have liked them to try to be a bit more bold just so that I had some more aha moments like I did in in the first game. I still think there's some really awesome set piece moments in this. And I, I mean, I know you're not saying that there isn't. So I, I wanted to ask you, like, other than the atmosphere, right, which we both like really, really enjoy. Like, what what's one of the other things that you found yourself like really enjoying in the game? Do, do you have something? Yeah, I mean, the elements, the lonely co-op elements, I think are really great. Um, and just the way that not only, you know, hey, when the other character is hoisting you up or, you know, helping you get through a gap, but just some of the ways that the other character would interact with the environment, like see your character do something and then kind of go and do their own thing or try to replicate it in their own way. That was very fascinating to me. Um, and I thought in general, like the AI was flawless is a bit strong, but like I didn't ever have any issues where it was like, dang it, I wanted you to do this. Or, oh, I thought you were going to be over here. They, they did a great job of incorporating a new character. Very smart AI. New character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also, like, I really still love the bosses. I mean, I know that's partially the the vibe, but, like, I don't, I'm not a horror fan, but I, I love, the, like, the, the lane they found here where it's like, hey, we're going to be really creepy and spooky, but we're not going to gross you out, but we're still going to, like, give you a nightmare, but we're not going to be... It, this isn't dead space, right? They're not like ripping you limb from limb. It's like old. It's like the old Tim Burton style. Is, yeah. Is kind of, it's kind of what I yeah. kind of describe it as. Like, I mean, I, I don't know what Tim Burton does so much anymore, <laughs> but like the older stuff that Tim Burton used to do. Also, uh, I don't know Beetlejuice vibes. I guess. Yes. Something like Very that. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Beetlejuice. It's like yeah. It's like if the soul of Tim Burton was shoved inside Jim Henson's body instead of his you know Sesame Street soul. Um, all in all, though, like, I really like the game. It just, it's, to me, it doesn't do enough to be like, wow, this is like a 9 or 10 out of 10. I never expected that, frankly. I mean, so, I mean, you, you brought up a rating. Do you want me to give mine first or do you want to give yours? Go, yeah, get, talk me through your rating. I think this is a very solid 8 out of 10. Not okay. a single point higher. I wouldn't call it an 8.1 or anything. Like, I, I was even tempted to do 7.5 because of the length, but I honestly do appreciate it. Like, I can't lie. Like, I, I think I'd be disingenuous if I, if I said, like, oh, I'm so upset that there wasn't, like, three more hours. <laughs> like, no, I'm cool. Like, what they what do, did, they do it did, well, and then they get the hell out, which is great. What did you give the first game? Would, would you have ranked it similarly or, or no, higher? No, I, 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 I think the first one being that it was, like, such a unique experience. Mm -hmm. And given that, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it did it like anything groundbreaking or anything, but you know, for its time, it was really different. It was, it was incredibly unique. So maybe that was closer to a nine. Yeah. Closer. Yeah. I, I feel ironically almost identical. I, I think it is a, a eight game, which, which is very recommendable. Like this is one of my favorite indies on switch, but it's not is up it there indie? in like the, you don't call it indie anymore? Nah. No, no. you think this, this has moved above indie? Yeah, it's Bandai. All right, mid-tier game. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is, for me, it's not in that eShop game tier of Katana Zero, Celeste, SteamWorld Quest. It doesn't quite reach that level for me. It might be the... Like, if I'm doing my top five, it might be my number five. Hmm. Of, I of really all, like of it. all eShop games, wow. Well, because so many of them are so similar to each other. Yeah, it, do, it does stand on its own, and I think that... You, you can't, like, really put a price on that. Like, that is so important, especially in today's gaming world where it's, like, every game on the eShop is either a 2D platformer, you know, or it's it's something that we've seen before. They, they feel very pixelated. They, they, they have just such typical styles. Or it's a roguelike. You know, you're 
your your nightmare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Little Nightmares 2, it's totally recommendable. I don't think in a busy month, I don't know that it's like the first buy, but I think you absolutely should try to play this if you can. It, it definitely will make you think by the end of it. It definitely has some very creepy moments, like creepier than the first game. Um, we did not spoil any of the things, but there are tools, I guess, that you have here that I think do expand the game in small ways, but ones that you will appreciate, especially if you are a fan of the first game. I never like saying things like this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Okay. In the history of Little Namers being out, we saw it go on sale quite often. Yes. And again, I never want to advocate for like, pay, like you know, paying less or whatever. Like, I, I think the game is worth the 30 but mm -hmm. if you absolutely do not want to pay 30 the original was a game that we saw go on sale a lot, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something, you know, similar with this. Yeah, if you're busy with Mario 3D World or you're, you know, got your pre-order down on Bravely Default 2, you could probably wait for a sale, but uh, if either of those games don't appeal to you, I don't think you'll, you'll pay this $30 and feel like you got ripped off. It is short, just know that up front, and know that it is maybe not as expansive as they hinted at but it still is a very quality game i think we both can safely say like big thumbs up and i mean we're talking about an eight like oh wait for yourself but an eight is still a great game it's just a really busy month and not only a busy month it's a busy first quarter yes. like you have monster hunter coming you have bravely default coming like there, there's a lot going on and i know that some of those franchises are pretty big for like a lot of people and those are 60 dollars. so i mean i don't know that's Little Nightmares 2, yeah. $30 on the eShop. We had a lot of fun with it. Hopefully you had fun with us today. Make sure to hit that like button if you did and let us know in the comments down below if you're planning to pick this one up and if you've already played it, what your take is. It now can insert itself on the eShop as another really good title and I'm just glad we got it day and date. Uh, would, would you be down for a Little Nightmares 3 or you think they should put it to bed? I was gonna ask you that. I would love a Little Nightmares 3 if they completely changed the art style. Huh. I, but like, but is, isn't that what makes this Little Nightmares? Yeah, but you can still make, I mean, you makes it that because that's what they want it to be. You know what I mean? Like, if you put me in charge, I'm making, I'm going to take Cuphead's art style and I'm going to do some really creepy stuff. Ooh. Some like okay. really creepy visuals. <laughs> like like weird psychedelic stuff with with, with really grotesque mo like monsters. I feel like you could do so, some different things. I mean, what I'd be down. I'd be down. They just got to change the gameplay up a little bit more. Yes, wouldn't it be interesting if Little Nightmares brought some more color into the world? Hmm, we'll leave you with that thought, and uh, everybody have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay smart out there. Gabe, thank you for joining me, and to everyone else, until next time, Switch Force, out.